About a week ago, I felt like I had a fairly solid idea for episode 15 of Studio Practice. I was gonna use the Memorial Day weekend in the process of running the Bayshore Marathon with my 13-year-old son and my wife as an excuse to discuss how exercise can make you smarter. This is where we're running our marathon, right here. From here to here, and back. Don't turn away. There's a twist. What's up, Memorial Day? This is episode 15 of Studio Practice. This is your no bullshit resource for those things that animate the artist and designer studio. This episode is on leisure. This is the leisure episode, appropriate for Memorial Day. We saw the first boat on the lake. Good morning. Morning. You saw the first boat on the lake? Like, it's a motorboat, but it was really cool. Cool. Is it warm up there? It is. Wait, guys, can I see the video? Can you put on slow motion? You right, Mui? <laughs> In the process of cutting the footage together, I realized there's a more compelling story to tell. And are you nervous? Yeah. My initial idea for this video in involved me providing trenchant insight into the fundamental challenges of running a marathon through reports from the field, then drawing a through line back to the fundamental challenges of studio practice and the development of the intellect. is that knowledge is power. It's my belief that intelligence is a set of behaviors that can be cultivated. Dedicate yourself to excellence, both physically, mentally, and spiritually, and to try to bring the entire picture up together, rather than simply dedicating yourself to the intellect. Watch it first quit smoking, smoke it, smoke, smoke it. Let's take a look at some of my insight now. Feeling good, three, feeling good. Feeling good, man. Five, feeling good, man. Still feeling good, man. I've been feeling good. My hips are a little bit tight. Not that big of a deal. Feeling good other than the, feeling good other than the mile 11. I'm getting hungry. I'm feeling good. 13.2. Feeling good. Mile 14. Still feeling good. Mile 15. Feeling good. 17. Feeling pretty good. Mile 18. Still feeling good. Mile 19 and it's starting to heat up. The sun came out. Getting a little bit harder. A little bit of pain creeping in now. Mile 21. Mile 22 and it's bringing the pain now. Mile 23 and the race is starting to bring the pain. Mile 24, the race is bringing the pain now, that's for sure. My trenchant commentary on marathoning boiled down to me saying, Feeling good! Feeling good! With a southern accent 24 times. I don't have a southern accent. Earlier in the episode, I mentioned that there's a far more compelling story to tell. What was that story? Well, let's take a look at this footage right here. Here we are at mile 24. I had two companions during the race. The first was my 13-year-old son, Henry, who we see here, and the second was my wife, Darlene. Hold up, sorry, and aside. No, this is not my wife, Darlene. I want you to look at this guy's shoes, okay? Crocs? 26.2 miles in Crocs? Can you hear that squishing around? In Harold Bloom's book, Genius, he talks about the genius of William Shakespeare. Looking for something to read? Read this. He refers to Shakespeare as almost exclusively absent in his work. Where shall Shakespeare be found in Shakespeare? We all want to find him in the sonnets, but he is too cunning for us. And you have to be the devil himself to find Shakespeare there. To my mind, this impulse is the exact opposite of narcissism. This is a larger point about narcissism which I see over and over both in my own work and in the work of graduate students and is a cautionary tale. In Greek mythology, Narcissus was a hunter well known for his beauty. He was very proud and held contempt for those who loved him. Nemesis noticed this behavior and attracted Narcissus to a pool whereby Narcissus became transfixed by his own reflection. Not realizing that it was merely an image, Narcissus fell in love with his own reflection, lost his will to live, and stared at his reflection until he died. What has this got to do with the marathon? The camera should have been focused on Henry, who at 13 placed number one in his age group for a marathon. Or the guy running in his Crocs. Through arrogance, I missed the exponentially more compelling narrative that was right in front of me. I was so in love with the sound of my own voice and my trenchant analysis on marathoning that I couldn't see this. The lack of flexibility, the immobileness, and the transfixed nature of Narcissus is a characteristic that plagues the designer or artist who falls prey to narcissism. I'm about to provide you with a few strong arrows for your critique quiver and a few powerful questions to consider when making your own work. 
Work of Tori Amos and Aegon Sheila notwithstanding, any time, any time you see the physical image of the artists themselves in their work. Now little Dale makes some girly squeal when he wins at the tone of Pomona. It begs a number of powerful questions that must be answered. All right, here are some tools for the next time you're confronted with work that contains the image of the artist. Point number one, is the representation of the artist physically or aesthetically flattering? Look, we live in 2016. Flattering can mean a host of things. Ask that on a penetrating level. Point two, not to get all modernist on your ass, but can the depiction of the artist be interpreted as necessary and absolutely essential to the work? If not, beat him up over it. Point three, is it possible to interpret the work as a mere display of the artist's dominion and power? Tell him to save the f***ing advertisements for the sheep people. That's not what's to be valued in art and design. Point four, and most importantly, has the depiction of the self rendered the artist blind to the obvious? Point four, dovetails with the Greek interpretation of the myth of Narcissus. And here is your suggestion for episode 15 to help move your work to a more contemporary and powerful space. Investigate non-ideal representations of the self. Cast a critical eye on flattering representations of the self. Point three, realize you are most interesting to you. Are you listening, Elliot? Point four, and most importantly, beware of the immobility and inflexibility inherent in depictions of the self. All right, hey, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button right here. If you enjoy the series, hit like, share this link with your friends, and please leave comments. Last week I got some excellent comments, so thank you very much. Till next time. Want to learn how to get paid in the art and design game? You might be interested in episode 12. Click here.